everybody. I'm Boaz Feiler. I'm an evolutionary astrologer. I'm here with Georgia. Hello, Georgia. You want to say hi to everybody? Come. No? Anyway, this is the evolutionary astrology forecast. This is where we talk about celestial transits over the next week, to Georgia, right? And about how it affects us all, all zodiac signs. Basically about celestial weather. So we're talking about the week between the 12th and the 19th of January, 2019. <coughs> We're beginning this week, excuse me, with an ultra transformative time, a time that could heighten drama, that could make us and people around us and life in general seem more intense. Right, Georgia? Oh, tail passing. But we're moving away from this time. It still is very intense until Monday. But as Tuesday comes in, there is a sense of tranquility that comes into the week. A bit of uh, heightening again in the energetical sphere on Wednesday. Um, I'm sorry, on Thursday. But then Friday and Saturday are very special again, and we're heading into a full moon eclipse next week, which is a very powerful time, especially if you are in the United States or any of the Americas. This eclipse will be right over your head, right, Georgia? And we'll talk about that in our next video more and a little bit at the end of this one. Other interesting things that are happening in the sky this week is that Mercury, the planet of communication, of navigation, of our thoughts and ideas, this very airy light and, and fleeting energy that moves from place to place gets hammered down by Saturn, the great judge, the old judge in a sense, that judges us according to reality. Does it work? Doesn't it work? Is it viable? Is it feasible? Can we make a system out of it? So when Mercury, which is an adolescent boy, joins with the old master, on the best level this can be a time of great mastery and adulthood in the good sense of the word, of growing up and maturing and taking responsibility to live within our own set of rules. The rules that we already know from our past uh, experience that are good for us, that make us have a more fulfilling, happy, healthy, continual, uh, 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 continuous stability in our lives. This is not about their rules. This is not about the rules of the universe. It's emerging of these two with my own experience and with what I know from my past, from my wrongdoings, from my mistakes that I need to change. So in the greatest energetical uh, appearance of it, we could think of that joining as a time that we are actually able to see things, to think of things, and to say things as they are. They need to be connected to reality, or we can be judged. Saturn will find us lacking, and an alignment will need to be put in place, or else Saturn says, I'm stopping you, I'm halting you in your place, until you confirm. Saturn isn't about, you know... Um, letting us in the gates because we're friends, because we've known each other, even because we're family. If you want to pass through these gates of maturity, if you want to prove through the test of reality and time, you have to be apt for the challenge. So this could be actually a time that we understand what is solid, within the sphere of our thoughts and ideas and our decisions to navigate forward in life. And what isn't? What was just an illusion, right, Georgia? But on the lesser positive side of things, we can feel that judgment heightens. We could feel that life is causing us to slow down and look at things deeper. And 
communications could be colder and harsher than usual. People could be silent instead of communicative. And the general feeling is that even when I'm in my surroundings, my society, the people around me, Mercury, I can still feel alone, Saturn. So if you do feel a little down through this time, remind yourself that as Count Ulde Rico uh, wrote down in the Rainbow Goblins, after the greatest thunderstorms come the most marvelous rainbows. Um, this is also a day, Sunday the 13th, I'm, I'm going down to the weekdays, I mean, um, two, a couple of more things happening through this week that have a prolonged effect like this Mercury joining Saturn. One is the exact square between Jupiter and Neptune. Jupiter, the enlightened benefactor, the, the planet which is in charge of enlarging and expanding everything from our consciousness to our bodies, from everything it touches in our chart is apt for great expansion. And expansion is always thought of something positive and something good. But what about overexpansion? If it touches Venus or a second house, we can gain weight. We can become glutinous. We can become um, too sensual. What if it hits our sixth house? We could have an expansion of our work, of our daily chores, of, of the things we have to go through, our daily motions. And the first thing that people do when they see a Jupiterian transit is say, wow, so you're going to a new level. Isn't that great? Yes, it is great. But we often forget that while we expand and go to a new level, there's new material to be learned. It's not an, as easy as it was before as we take more upon ourselves. And the greatest mistake at these times and whenever you have a Jupiterian transit is taking too much upon yourself, believing that you're omnipotent, that you have all the time and the strength to deal with everything. And then what happens is a breakdown because that expansion was not feasible. Right, George? Yeah. It wasn't feasible and there was a collapse and you let yourself down and some other people down. And that's a promise that remains unfulfilled, which is also a Jupiterian trait. Remember that Jupiter used to rule Pisces as well. There's a lot of naivety there, a lot of belief that if I'll go through the motions, if I'll build it, they will come. <laughs> you know, if I go through the motions, I will be able to do it. And when Jupiter in the sky is squaring Neptune, which is in charge of illusion and the breaking of the illusion, about the truth as objective and unpersonal as it could ever be, coupled with that Saturn bringing that somber energy as well to Mercury, there's a challenge here. On the one hand, I have to step out of my comfort zone. And this square is going to follow us throughout the year. It's a year that we need to heed our dreams, to listen to the calling, to believe that it is possible, naively sometimes. But beware. Don't get caught up in illusions. Don't get caught up in over-optimism or overconfidence. Don't forget that we are living on the plane of reality and do connect that cloud to the ground. Do make that ladder that can be a gateway between the ideal and the real. Um, other things that are happening, Mercury is going to sextile Neptune this week. It's a lot of inspiration. It's a time that we can have more subtle communications. 
more gentle communications. And that's a good influence, especially because of that Saturn conjunction. And as I said, we could be very artistic or inspirational in the way we do things and communicate things. Other important transits this week is that Venus is going to trine Mars. It's an energetic, beautiful time between males and females and between the sexes in general, you know, or between lovers in general. You could be from the same sex. <laughs> Whichever sex or gender you are on, <laughs> this could be an energetic, lively, full of zest time. So do utilize it. Do utilize it. And, and, and enjoy this time. Do go the extra mile to create the opportunities and the activities and the openings that you need to actually utilize this energy in your life and do something creative with it. This is also a good time to take financial projects forward. But doing that very responsibly, cautiously, not going over the top, not jumping too high too soon, but do walk forward. It's a good time to walk forward. Actually, it's a time for important decisions and you could be changing your minds over this week because Mercury is going to conjunct Pluto as well. It's conjuncting all these very hard planets and when Mercury conjuncts, Pluto, it's a time that our mind changes, transforms the things that we believe in, the things that we think of, our ideas, and the way we communicate, and the way we navigate through our life, can change. There could be great changes in our environments, in our close environment, in the proximity of our houses and neighborhoods, and our in larger family and our brothers and sisters and siblings aunts and ankles uh, aunts and ankles <laughs> um, instead of aunts and uncles yeah Georgia it's funny aunts and ankles instead of aunts and uncles isn't it anyway but we do have to watch out from drama because we can become overly obsessive we can dive in too deep, use, utilizing our left brains. We can become obsessive about things we think of and about our ideas. And we need to be careful not to be too intense for people, not to be too intense for our own good, because at the end of this week, we're heading into a time that could be more um, turbulent in the sense of its transformations we have the sun squaring uranus exactly at the end of this week and then we're heading into a full super wolf moon eclipse yes georgia so it's a very important time to look over our inner composition what makes up our energetical and our emotional sphere. How do we maintain the hygiene and the inner sanctity of this mechanism, Georgia? Through this time and through these challenges, how can we stop? I saw a beautiful saying this week. How can we stop being good persons and become better persons? This is a time of personal transformation. And if through this time we lose patience, we lose the tolerance towards other people in our environments or towards our environment in general that doesn't keep up with the way we see the, the need for change and for walking forward, that doesn't keep up with how we want to innovate or in how we want to renovate and mutate our lives we can become people who throw away babies with bath waters if we're not careful so look over your own emotional 
and, 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 and uh, mental composition through this time. Do your own work. Make sure that your own garden is in order. Cultivate what is beautiful in your life. Cultivate what is passionate and satisfactory in your life. Draw strength from the people you love and the people around you. Because through these times, as we go through these changes, it is best to do it with our clan. Especially at this time of great intensity as the super full moon will draw in. And it's a time of great intuition. It's a time that we can get a glimpse of where it is we need to be heading. Sometimes we can be shown what our destiny is. This eclipse is in the zero point of Leo Aquarius. That axis on its most, um, I wouldn't say strongest, but its most cardinal um, degree. So, let's go down to the weekdays. Remember, I talk in uh, Central European time. If you are in the States, move it nine hours before. In the Pacific, Australia, nine hours ahead. Saturday, good day. Wonderful day for activities. Wonderful day to be outside. Wonderful day to enjoy it with your loved ones. Enjoy it with friends. Eat, drink, feast. Um, especially the nighttime, as there is a trine between the moon and Venus. And the moon is in Aries. It's a very um, artistic and creative energy as well. If you are artist, if you deal with anything creative, it's a wonderful time. Sunday the 13th, the moon is conjunct uh, Mars in the morning, uh, early, early in the morning. So if you are heading into work on Sunday, like we do here in Israel, um, you know, just take it a little slower because things can become a little too fast and intense. Um, it's that same day that we have the square between uh, the moon and that conjunction between uh, Saturn and Mercury that we talked about before. So we are going to feel, not only is that conjunction on Sunday exact, the square by the moon to that conjunction is exact as well. So we can feel it through this day and if you are a little somber and things are not going exactly the way you thought they will um, it's okay Jupiter comes to our rescue in the afternoon and trining the moon making things a little easier and more fantastic than they usually are <coughs> Monday the moon already moves to Taurus but it squares Pluto in the early morning and then it squares the Sun later on um, and then it conjuncts Uranus. It's a day that you need to allow yourselves to uh, step out of your comfort zone, do new things, and do things in an innovative way. It's a day that bright ideas can come in. And there's a real difference in pace between the Taurian moon and the conjunction to Uranus. So it could be a day that we want to take it slower, but it has a fast pace, or vice versa. Um, Mercury is, conjunct is uh, sextiling Jupiter, um, Neptune, as we said before. It's a day that could have more gentle communications because of it. And then Tuesday, while the moon is still in Taurus, there's a great calm that comes down. Things become more stable. There's a trine between the moon and Saturn and a sextile to Neptune. It's a very beautiful energy throughout the evening. Wednesday, the 16th, moon still in Taurus, trining Mercury, trining, uh, uh, trining Pluto, and trining the Sun later on that night. Again, beautiful day with a lot of strong, intense, deep, transformative, but positive communications if we are working the energy right. We do have to watch out for wanting too much from our partners, from the others, from our relationships. As I said, it's a good time to look on ourselves and what we're doing more than on the other guy's lawn. Because there is an opposition to Venus 
on the 17th, the moon is moving into Gemini. We're walking into a faster pace, something that is less uh, um, filled with satisfaction and has more of a tendency to get a little frustrated that things are not moving fast enough. Um, at the evening time, things are moving fast enough. And it's a very energetical evening, Thursday evening, good time to go out and be with people or have any sports activity, artistic activity, something that will move your bones. Uh, Friday, the 18th, again, a day to watch for overindulgence or over passivity or over optimism or too much naivety. Saying that, it can be a very creative time. It could be a good time to be in nature. Uh, especially in the wilderness. Uh, it could be a great time to be with the elements. Mercury is conjunct Pluto on that day, and Venus is trining Mars on that day. So do take it to the next level, but watch out not to be too intense or dramatic or obsessive about how you want your plans to go. Saturday, the 19th, Sun squares Uranus, uh, moon sextiles it. It's not such an easy day energetically as the moon is in sensitive cancer. Doesn't know how to deal with that fast Uranian pace that life can demand on Saturday. Try and take it easy. It's a great day to be in intimacy with your families and the people you feel closest to. Or just be at home and enjoy a great meal and... and uh, some some home comforts we are heading into a full super moon eclipse a wolf moon eclipse on the 2021st depending where you are in the globe it's in the zero degree of leo and a lunar eclipse is a time of inner subjective change that sponge we call the moon that translates everything from that objective vast experience we call the universe or life into something subjective that is part of us that has touched us that is filtered through, that filtering system can change. Our families can change. The women in our life, our mothers, most virtual and real, can change. Us as mothers can change. I have a, a, a nephew that is hopefully going to be born uh, within the next 24 hours, born with that great intensivity in his chart and I was talking to my wife today about that chart you know and that birth and we have to understand that everything is a spectrum it can take us both ways and a lot of the times it is our own choice it is not what the stars have given us but what we chose to do with it so I hope you're going to have a very powerful and good week. I want to thank you for listening. On behalf of Georgia and myself, thank you for flying with us, and we hope to see you again on one of our further encouragements. Have a great week. Live long. Prosper.